Welcome to Gridball 55. I'm your host, Pat Rogers. And I'm Andy Potemkin. As always, let's start with the team news. Hopefully, by now, you'll know what all the information means, so I won't go over it again. You can get more information at gridball.webs.com. We are now into Game 4 of 10, and the objective is to finish first or second in the group to get through to Round 2. The third place teams will qualify automatically for next year's first round. The remaining teams will have to go back to the drawing board and enter the qualifying round next year. Teams get 3 points for a win by 5 or more goals, 2 points for any other win, 1 point for a scoring tie, nothing for a nil-nil or defeat, and a team losing by 5 goals also lose a point. Thanks Mandy. West Ham's Dorothy Curtin is now 4 goals clear in her pursuit of a golden bat, to add to the one she won in 1952. The Larnarkshire Miners are not only the hottest attack in the competition with 17 goals, but they're one of three teams yet to concede. Wilston and Richmond are the others. The Hammers, Miners, Saxons and Revolution are joined by Liverpool and Glasgow as the six teams with three wins from three. Belfast, Lindsay, Portsmouth and Oklahoma haven't scored yet, although Portsmouth and Belfast have tied a game nil-nil. Lancashire, Stoke and Houston have also lost all three games. I'm here in Liverpool for their tie with Monmouthshire today, and Liverbird centre Myla Reid has me under instructions to keep her up to date with her beloved Newcastle United, as they take on Manchester City today in the cup final at Wembley. Yuck. What's with you Europeans and your soccer? Anyway. Today's background music is from a movie that earned an Academy Award nomination for the actress. It was a remake of a 1935 film that starred Irene Dunn and Robert Taylor. A rich playboy whose recklessness inadvertently causes the death of a prominent doctor, tries to make amends to his widow, and falls for her in the process. Yep, tissues at the ready. So, let's get going. I'm here in Europe and Mandy Potemkin calls the game stateside. You have to fear for St. Louis today, and that's the worst possible start for them. Joan Bellamy giving Bristol the lead. And Plymouth also have the early advantage over inform West Ham through Pamela Potter. The post-Julie Stamp era starts well for Stepney, with Leslie Sears giving them the lead. The top scorers are up and running early again. Gillen gives Lanarkshire the lead. McClory marks her return to the Stoke team with a goal, to give them the lead in Cardiff. Millicent Cleghorn gets Belfast's first goal of the season. What a difference a new coach can make. Carolina and Detroit have both taken the lead in Group F, Scafford and Kyle Clough with the goals. French gets Norfolk a quick equaliser, and that's the first goal Lanarkshire have conceded this season. Stoke have made a flying start in Cardiff, Wells puts them two up, and a much needed lead for Cheshire through Gilbert. And Anna Mayna has her seventh goal of the season to put Birmingham in front. Lindsay have their first goal of the season, and within a minute get another. Bidmead has also given Wilsden the lead. Eileen Dalton scores on her full debut, to set Belfast up for their first win of the season. Bristol are too good for St. Louis, Julia Johns has made it two and they're pushing for a third. Unbeaten Berkshire are playing some great grip ball, Piggott gets the equaliser in Detroit. Derbyshire's unbeaten run wasn't expected to end in Oklahoma, Cook gives them the lead. Glasgow's perfect season continues, as Lydia Law gives them the lead in Indianapolis. Goals galore in Norfolk, Lanarkshire are proving unstoppable at the moment with three and two minutes. What on earth is happening to Cheshire? Two in a minute for Bolton, and the Cats are heading for a third straight defeat. Lindsay's season starts today it seems, but Portsmouth are having a horrible time, game four and yet to score. It's a great debut for Belfast coach, Julie Stamp. Green gets the third for the Weavers. The points look safe for Bristol, but West Ham have a mountain to climb in Plymouth as Anderson gets the second. Carolina are in control with a goal from Penny Gabriel, and Berkshire's unbeaten start was always going to be tested by Detroit. Janet Colclough put them back in front, and now Morton has given them daylight. Goals in all the Group G games, where the Orchids and Revolution have equalized, and the Americans have taken the lead. Houston have to win this one, and Carruthers puts them in front, while Yuri has doubled Glasgow's lead. Mary Gilbert has her first hat-trick for Cheshire, but they're involved in a cracker with Bolton. Lindsay quickly shut down any Portsmouth fight back. Sheffield have taken the lead against Manchester, and Wilston are down to six but have doubled their lead despite the setback. Bellamy completes her hat trick, and the fighters will be off the bottom of the group tonight. Other goals to report at halftime. Morton has put Detroit in command, 
Cook and Schofield with two in a minute for Derbyshire, and Pill has equalised for Philadelphia. Reese scores for the champions, Wells and McClory have Stoke in command, and Jameson has a hat-trick for Bolton. It was West Ham last year, this year Cheshire are really struggling. Perfect start to the third quarter for Edinburgh, as Greta Dixon scores. Joe Prowse sets Bristol up for the bonus point, but you have to feel for St. Louis today. After a very dull first half, Barbara Holt puts Worcester in front. And in the same group, Janet Colclough has a hat-trick for Detroit. That's Sylvia Blake Easton's first ever goal, in her 24th appearance, and Pill has turned it around for Philly, who now lead the Americans. There's a surprise, Patsy Bamer gets an equalizer for Des Moines. Portsmouth might not be dead yet, as Eileen Andrews gets their second of the game. Edinburgh are transformed, as Trina Lynn gets them right back in it against Belfast. It's all Plymouth against West Ham, and Pamela Potter has netted twice to wrap up the win. June Walker has wrapped up the points for Lanarkshire, but took a heavy whack on the head when scoring, and has had to go off. Sunderland haven't been as dominant in the second half, but Cathy Stobart finally gets their goal. And Leeds are another dominant team finally rewarded. Marion Kennelly with the equaliser. Stoke go 5-0 up, but Cardiff hit back within a minute to save the penalty point, and Cheshire are level again against Bolton. 5-2 now to Lindsay, another goal for Mitten, and Moreland gives Sheffield breathing space. Edinburgh have come back from three down to level through Greta Dixon. Pauline Mason may well have won the points for Croydon, and Pauline Dobby's Liverpool goal has been quickly cancelled out by Jean Anstis. Poor St. Louis just want the day to end. And Morton is having a great day, Detroit have demolished Berkshire. If Glasgow pick up another bonus point, they'll have one foot in the second round already. Sheila Cook wanted that bonus point, so is Sinbind for throwing her bat in anger when Elizabeth Courtney scored for Cardiff. Joy Day gets another for Portsmouth, but they've surely left themselves too much to do. And Angela Crow wraps it up for Sheffield. Lots of late drama in Group D, where Liverpool just about deserved that late Pauline Dobby winner. Patricia Jackson has wrapped up the points for Croydon, but Eileen Dalton thinks she's got Belfast's first win of the season, only for Gabrielle Hamilton to score twice in a minute for Edinburgh in a sensational game. There's late hope for Islington, with Rose Watford halving the deficit in Carolina. And Judy Webster may have earned a point for Skullcoats against Worcester. That's cruel on Bolton as Jean Sloan may well have secured a very unimpressive win for Cheshire. Antonio Moreland puts a gloss on Sheffield's afternoon, but Manchester badly missed their star player today. What an unbelievable afternoon in Edinburgh. Florence Murray must surely have earned Belfast a deserved point this time. Relief for Wandsworth, they've been poor today, but Audrey O'Neill has scraped a winner at the death. The Hooters are going around the arenas, but there's a late goal for Sheffield to earn a bonus point. Lanarkshire also scored late, but not enough to get a bonus this time. Exactly 100 goals scored today, 3 bonus point wins, 7 hat tricks, 2 double braces, 2 simbins, and 1 team blows a free goal lead. Let's get today's results from the Major. World Gridball Championship, Round 1, Match 4. Lancashire Hot Pots nil, Sunderland Wasps 1. Newcastle Reavers 1, Leeds Owls 1. Norfolk Icini 2, Lanarkshire Miners 6. Birmingham Bullets 1, Dublin Ravens 0. Cardiff Dragons 2, Stoke Trents 5. Cheshire Cats 5, Bolton Rifles 4. Leicester Vixens 0, Wilston Saxons 2. Portsmouth Pompeys 3, Lindsay Poachers 5. Sheffield Steels 5, Manchester Bees 0. Edinburgh Rocks 5, Belfast Weavers 5. Kent Phillies 0, Croydon Crystals 2, Liverpool Liverbirds 2, Monmouth Shabikans 1, Bristol Fighters 6, St. Louis Spirits 0, Plymouth Pilgrims 4, West Hammers 0, Wandsworth Brewers 1, Cleveland Foresters 0, Carolina Marines 2, Islington Angels 1, Detroit Motors 7, Berkshire Deers 1, Skullcoats Flyers 1, Worcester Hearts 1, Oklahoma Orchids 1, Derby Shoes 4. Philadelphia Quakers 2, Birmingham Americans 1. Richmond Revolution 1, Stepney Tenders 1. Houston Stars 2, Des Moines Rapids 1. 
Indianapolis Racers nil, Glasgow Claymores 6. And finally, Los Angeles Dreamers nil, Memphis Fever nil. These are the tables after four games. Lanarkshire, Wilsdon, Liverpool and Glasgow have won all four games, with the Miners having the strongest attack with 23 goals. Lancashire and Oklahoma are the two teams to have lost all four games. You can see the full detailed tables at gridball.webs.com, with two bonus points each. Lanarkshire and Glasgow are already looking very good bets for the second round. Dorothy Curtin failed to find the target for the first time this season, Jackson and Holt both closed the gap with goals today. My team of the week recognizes Wilsden's good defensive performance, and Gilbert bailing the Cats out, but the star is Gracie Ray. Appearing in my team for the second consecutive week. Sitting at number 5 in the UK charts this week, is Canadian Quartet The Crew Cuts, with Earth Angel, which will peak at number 4. So, what was that remake of a 1935 movie that today's music came from? Magnificent Obsession would earn Jane Wyman an Oscar nomination, and the everlasting gratitude of Rock Hudson, who was so nervous, he needed dozens of takes on almost every scene. I haven't forgotten that it was cup final day today. And a sensational one at that, with Newcastle scoring in less than a minute. Poor old Manchester City lost a man to injury, though, unlike in gridball, you're not allowed substitutes in football. How unfair. Anyway, City did equalise but I watched the second half on television with Liverpool's Myla Reid, who was one very happy Newcastle fan at the end of their 3-1 win. I fell for you and I knew the vision This week we tracked down the struggling Stoke Trents as they prepared for a trip to Cardiff. Judy Wells and Jennifer Jones are forming a new partnership in Stoke's attack. Wells has four goals in as many games since taking over the number seven shirt from Edna Gibson. Sheila McClory and Eileen Kennington both arrived this season, and are still getting used to partnering each other in centre court. McClory won the title with Dublin in 1953, Kennington came from Plymouth. Coach Sarah Jacobs has the task of trying to get the Trents on winning ways. Her scouts give her the lowdown on the card of Dragons. And if they don't sugarcoat the scouting report, a trade bake will do the job. Netminder Abigail Dacre has had a tough few games, but equally high hopes that the trip to Wales will turn their season around. Sheila Cook's husband is a local vet, which is handy when it comes to looking after the club mascot. Trenty the monkey travels to every game in the UK, and is a popular feature with the fans. Cook's defensive partner is Hilary Cooklin. The pair have struggled to find the right blend this season. But perhaps there was something in the herbal tea before their trip to Cardiff, because they got the balance just right to run out 5-2 winners, with a McClory hat-trick and two for Wells, although Cook will sit out the next game for throwing her bat when the Dragons scored their second goal. Maybe injured defender Rebecca Warlow might be fit in time for their next match.